Hey everyone, this is Unit 2, Section 2.1, Linear Equations and Two Variables. Um, so here I've given you the rectangular coordinate system, and it goes counterclockwise. So it goes quadrant 1, where x and y are both positive, quadrant 2, negative x and positive y, quadrant 3, negative x, negative y, quadrant 4, positive x, negative y. Remember that this vertical line going straight up and down is known as your y-axis, and the line going left to right, which is your x-axis, is going also known as your horizontal axis. Standard form in linear equations is in the form of ax plus by equal to c. This is your standard form. x and y should be on the same set of equal signs, and a and b are not both zero, so they need to be, one has to be present. So we're going to try example one. In example one, it says, for the linear equation, negative... 2x plus 3y equal to 8, determine whether the ordered pairs is a solution to the system. So in order to determine if it's a solution, we are substituting in negative 4, 0 into our equation. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down negative 2x plus 3y equal to 8, and I'm going to label that this is my x and this is my y. So we're going to use substitution and plug in for it. So I'm going to do negative 2, and in parentheses, I'm going to put a negative 4 plus 3 times 0 equals 8. So negative 2 and negative 4 gives us positive 8. This gives us 0. 8, so we get 8 equals 8. Okay. So on B, it says 2, negative 4 is our order pair, so you're going to substitute into negative 2x plus 3y equal to 8. Start out with setting up your equation. And you're going to replace x and y with 2 and negative 4. So again, mark your x's and y's and your new substitution. So negative 2 times, it's negative 2 times your positive 2 plus 3 times your negative 4 equaling 8. So we want to know if the left side and the right side are equivalent. So we get negative 4 and 3 and negative 4 is negative 12. And when you do the math and sub add them together, we get negative 16 is equivalent to 8, which is a false statement. So the answer is no, it is not a solution. So on C, you're doing the same thing, only now we're involved with fractions. Again, label it x and y. Start out with writing your equation, negative 2x plus 3y equaling 8. And we're now going to replace x's and y's again. So it's negative 2 times a positive 1, 3 times 10 thirds as a fraction equaling 8. And the reason you're going to leave it as a fraction, 10 thirds, and not make it 3.3 repeating is because by doing so, leaving it as a fraction, the threes can cancel each other out. So we get negative 2 plus 10. Does that result in 8? We get 8 equaling 8. So it is a solution. Okay, when graphing using x and y intercepts, the first thing to know is that x intercepts, you're going to make the y equal to 0 and solve for the x. Then make the y intercept, make the x equal to 0 and solve for y. So I gave us an example here. It says 3x plus 5y equal to 15. You have a great tool, which is your index finger. If you cover your y variable, you have an equation that says 3x equal to 15. So to find the x-intercept, the x setup is 3x equal to 15, and you do the same thing with the x's, and you get 5y equal to 15 for your y-intercept. Solve for x and y by dividing by 3 and 5, respectively. So we get x equaling 15 equaling 5, and the y value equaling 3. So if we're not plotting x equal to 5 and y, make sure it's an ordered pair. So you are going to say 5 comma 0 for the x-intercept, 0 comma 3 for the y-intercept. These are your two ordered points that you're going to plot in your x-y coordinate plane to get your graph. So first thing, we're going to plot our x-intercept, which is at 5, 0. I'm going to put a dot on the x-axis at 5, 0, and then you're going to put a dot at the y-axis at 0, 3. Once you have both points, sketch your graph line. And make sure that when you graph your graph, there's arrows on both ends to represent a line and not a line segment. On example 3, we're going to do the same thing, only... They gave your equation to you in y equal to 1 half x minus 2, which means it's in y-intercept mode of y equals mx plus b. So we're going to identify our m. Our m is 1 half, which means you're going to rise 1 to the right 2. The b value says it is at negative 2, which means the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. So you're going to start 
with the wire set. And then apply the slope. Then apply rise over run. So we're going to start with a at negative two on the y axis. You're rising one step and to the right two. So we went up one over two. Put your new point. Connect your dots using graph line. Make sure you have arrows on the end. Okay, example four says you're given 2x plus 4 equal to 8. It says find the x and y intercepts. So same concept. Cover your y value. And you have your first equation for your x-intercept. So we have 2x equals 8. Cover the x. You have your y-intercept equation, which is 4y equaling 8. Divide both this first one by 2, so x is equal to 4. Your 4 comma 0. Divide the second one by 4, so y equals 2. We're at 0 comma 2. Example 5. Companies and corporations are permitted to depreciate assets that have a known useful lifespan, for example, vehicles. The J.M. Gus Trucking Company purchases a new truck for $65,000. The truck will be depreciated at $13,000 per year. The equation that describes this depreciation line is y equals 65,000 minus 13,000 x, where y represents the value of the truck in dollars and x is the age of the truck in years. Find x and y intercept and plot the graph. So first thing, in order to find your x and y intercept, we're going to take our original equation that we they gave us, y equals 65,000 minus 13,000 x. I'm going to move the 13,000 over so that I'm in standard form. So now we see 13,000 x plus y equals 65,000. Makes it easier to find your x and y intercepts. So remember to find your x intercept, you're going to make y equal to 0, solve for x. So we get 13,000 x equaling 65,000. Divide both sides by 13,000. So x equals 5. To find the y-intercept, you're going to make x equal to 0, solve for y. So in this instance, we recover 13,000, we get y equals 65,000. Remember, these are ordered pairs, so we have it as 5 comma 0 and then 0 comma 65,000. Now to graph it, we're going to do a rough sketch. So when you're graphing depreciation, you're only in the first quadrant. So zeros here, we're going to say we're starting up here at 65,000. And then you have your tick marks, your increments. And remember, we said 5. 5 represents the number of years. So in year 5, we hit our graph. And, year, and then at year 0, we're at 65,000. So we actually have... sloped line hitting zero. What does this mean? It means in five years the value is zero. Vertical and horizontal lines. Vertical line has an equation written in the form of x equal to k where k is a constant. Horizontal lines has an equation written in the form of y equal to k where k is also a constant. So in example six, it says graph x equals six. What does this mean? It means there is a vertical line going through six comma zero. So we put a dot at 
x axis, which is at 6, 0, and you draw a line straight up and down. So what happens is when it's form of x equal to 6 or x equal to any number, it's a vertical line, which means it runs parallel. to the y-axis. Example 7, it says graph y equals, graph 4y equals a negative 7. So first thing, you divide both sides by 4. So y is equal to negative 7 over 4. So this is going to be somewhere between 1 and a half and 2, because 4 goes into 7 one time with a remainder. So it comes out to be exactly 1.75. So we're looking at y equals a negative 1.75. So 0 comma negative 1.75 is what we're plotting. So on the y-axis, here's the negative 1, here's my negative 2. So we're closer to the negative 2, and I'm putting a line, and we're running horizontally. So there is a horizontal line going through 0, comma, negative 7 fourths. It runs parallel to the x-axis. 